Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Bazaars and welcome to your detailed forecast update for December the 3rd, 2024. We've got a lot to crack through today, including heavy rainfall expected to continue across the far north of Queensland into the Northern Territory. Plenty of rainfall as well into the central half of Queensland and a lot heading into New South Wales today. We'll talk about showers and storms across the southern parts of the nation as well and then two separate tropical lows or tropical interests that I would like to talk about, one offshore from Queensland and the other one offshore from Western Australia. The WA1 does have better chances, but we'll take a look at both later on in the forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated, but we're going to get stuck straight into things today up in Queensland's far north. Uh, we've had some pretty good rainfall. Let me just uh, come out and say that over the past 24 hours, accumulations have amounted to up to 160 millimetres outside of Kurumba at Rex Creek, and accumulations between 100 and 150 millimetres throughout the Cassowary Coast, and up towards 120 millimetres outside of the Daintree Rainforest. And you can see just from these thunderstorms that have now turned into steady uh, light to moderate rainfall that's been pretty stagnant over some of these locations over the past couple of hours. Let's see if we can get a bit of a radar loop going through here. Uh, the rainfall has been much needed. It's been very welcome up there and again, very great to see a lot of people are going to be waking up very happy to the amount of rainfall that they've had up in the Queensland's far north area. Uh, the rainfall also still continuing right now as we speak around the Cooktown area. A couple of light showers as well around the Daintree Rainforest and a few light showers as well further south down towards Ingham and Cardwell. In fact, there's a nice line being driven ashore into Ingham now. Uh, plenty more rainfall expected there over the coming couple of hours if this line keeps itself up. And then just jumping straight into the forecast, I mean we've got more thunderstorms and more showers expected later on this afternoon and evening and from this stagnant trough line they're going to be slow moving pulse thunderstorms once again. They fire up, they dump an awful lot of rainfall over about half an hour and they really don't move anywhere. Today they're going to have a slightly uh, more southwesterly motion, they're going to be coming in from the north and then heading slowly towards the southwest so areas into the Cassowary Coast or further inland are like, unlikely to receive as much rainfall as what they have been so Atherton and Raver, so the rainfall might be slightly easing off there for those locations, but further inland out towards Forsyth, Georgetown, Croydon, Normanton, that sort of area, and then even further out towards Huendon and Charters Tower, some great thunderstorms expected later on tonight, and even into the central parts of Queensland as well, I mean this needs no introduction, severe thunderstorms expected around Matabara, extending down through Longreach, Tambo, Jericho, and then further south towards Charleville and Wyandra right down to the Queensland and New South Wales border. Again, I'll get to this in just a few minutes because I do want to go into great detail with those thunderstorms. But all in all, another stormy night across Queensland's north and the rainfall continuing to pipe up right through the evening and then into the early morning hours. It's really not going to ease off and you can already start to see a bit of an onshore flow pattern starting to develop by early tomorrow morning and as such, those rainfall accumulations are going to continue to pile onto the 9am tomorrow. More thunderstorms expected tomorrow afternoon as well. More rainfall expected throughout tomorrow evening and into early, tomorrow, uh, into early Thursday morning rather for parts of the Cassowary Coast and then up in towards the Daintree. That rainfall really doesn't ease off through Thursday either. It, it just continues to pile on, moving ashore and then turning into thunderstorms once it gets over the Atherton Ranges and then further inland towards Georgetown and Croydon. Friday looks a little bit calmer further inland, but still plenty of rainfall along the coastline. I mean, you can see it here continuing to pile on through Friday morning and into the afternoon hours. Saturday, more showers expected. The rainfall slowly easing off throughout Sunday though, and then it looks a little bit dry throughout the course of next week. But all in all, the far northern Queensland, it is going to be a wet end to the week and that's reciprocated between the rainfall forecast as well. I mean, you can see over the next four and a half days through to Saturday, accumulations along the coastline expected to be in excess of 100 millimetres around the Innisfail and Tully area. And I believe the Access G3 model just does it way better. I mean, not only is it calling for an actual realistic amount of rainfall across the far north of Queensland, this is why I use the Access G3 model pretty much exclusively up in Queensland's far north, even though it can be uh, quite wrong around other regions of Australia. But I mean, 250 millimetres will fall in a day up in this part, and the Eastern Rift just isn't calling for that much rainfall. So this is just a much more accurate, much more reliable prediction, and something that I'm much more confident in presenting on this channel here. Innisfail and Tully expecting a couple of good falls as well, at least 150 millimetres for both locations, and then further up into the Daintree. Like I said, from that onshore flow on both Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday mornings, accumulations over the next uh, four days expected to be in excess of 250 millimetres up there. The rainfall does, however, unfortunately ease off for the Atherton Tablelands. It's kind of the only dry spot across the Cape York Peninsula, in fact, over the next five days. And that's because the rainfall just cannot get over the immediate ranges that, um, uh, kind of shadow the coastline and then the rainfall again from those thunderstorms firing up over the tablelands but kind of sweeping off the mountains towards the west and then heading further inland towards the uh, actual interior of the Cape York Peninsula and as such those locations expecting much more rainfall than the Atherton tablelands. That's going to disappoint a lot of people. They've had a bit of a teaser with some great rainfall over the last couple of days. Again further inland out towards Croydon, Georgetown, Normanton, Corumba, the rainfall is far from over. Plenty more rainfall expected over the next three days from thunderstorms and they will come in dramatic fashion as well. More severe thunderstorms 
thunderstorms expected with heavy rainfall. And further up the Cape York Peninsula as well, some really good falls also expected. But the highlight of the rainfall, of course, along the coastline here, I mean, some big accumulations look possible uh, around the Port Douglas and Cape Tribulation and Woodchill Woodchill area, at least 200 millimetres of pop for those locations. Cairns again expecting about 80 millimetres. So some great falls expected to continue up into Queensland's far north. You can see 10 day rain, uh, 14 day rainfall accumulations, rather, they do continue to pile on across the far north of Queensland, but we are expecting a bit of a dry phase towards the end of next week across Queensland's far north, uh, or th right throughout next week, rather, and even into towards the end of next week. So again, it is worth watching what actually happens across Queensland's far north. Um, Certainly some interesting stuff, however, if we head into the central parts of Queensland, that kind of trough line low pressure system weather event that we were talking about yesterday that I said I wanted to take a look at in great detail today, well, unfortunately there isn't a whole lot to take a look at in great detail. In fact, it's looking pretty quiet here over the 14 day forecast, even the GFS not really suggesting anything either, and that's how quickly the weather can change on the forecast. It's that time of the year, we're now in the tropics and it's hard to make a reliable two week weather prediction up here. So I'm going to stick to uh, what I know here and what uh, I know uh, works and that is those short-term weather predictions however again that heads up yesterday for that heavy rainfall across the central parts of Queensland never really was confident in it and you can now scratch it from the forecast for your location it doesn't really look like a possibility at this time not even the Axis G3 really suggesting anything either but worth keeping an eye on and we will keep a close eye on the central parts of Queensland the interesting stuff is happening today and I want to include New South Wales in this forecast as well you can see showers and thunderstorms continuing across interior parts of New South Wales and into Queensland as well some of the rain also quite heavy at times as well. We've had some decent accumulations over the past 24 hours in excess of 25 millimetres around Coban, Wanaring, and even out towards White Cliffs and Lightning Ridge as well. Some falls uh, there have been, or some decent falls have also been reported. Lightning Ridge about to get smashed with a bit of a line of thunderstorms as well. Now showers and thunderstorms expected to fire up across interior parts of Queensland around Longreach, Charleville, this sort of general area here, Tambo. Uh, much further inland from the coastline than normal for this time of the year. But again, these thunderstorms expected to be slow-moving pulsed ones uh, carrying heavy rainfall, damaging winds, and the chance of some medium to large-sized hailstones. The further south you get, the more motion they're going to have in terms of a bit of a forward velocity and a little bit of a predictable path. Uh, the thunderstorms further south, especially down towards the border, will be a little bit less intense as well, tending to rainfall at times. And then as you get further south into New South Wales as well, it's more likely going to be just a mishmash of moderate rainfall showers moving through. Sydney expecting a couple of drops of rainfall by this evening as well. Nothing too crazy there. A couple of thunderstorms also possible into the western suburbs later on this afternoon. And then into the west of New South Wales as well. Some thunderstorms expected later tonight into early tomorrow morning. Showers and thunderstorms concentrated to the northeast of New South Wales later on tomorrow afternoon as well. A couple of severe ones possible along the border outside of Stanthorpe and Wollongra uh, as well. South of Warwick and Toowoomba. A couple of thunderstorms also up the Sunshine Coast and into the southeast of Queensland in general. Looks like some good falls are possible early Thursday morning from the showers and thunderstorms being stagnant and slow moving around the scenic rim in the Gold Coast hinterland area. Some good thunderstorms expected to fire up Thursday evening as well before a quieter period it takes hold from Friday onwards. You can see a couple of thunderstorms still expected on Friday here and there, but they're not going to be anything like they will be on both Wednesday and Thursday night. So into the southeast of Queensland, some decent storms are possible, and that is reciprocated amongst the rainfall forecast as well. You can see two-day rainfall accumulations between Thursday, uh, Wednesday night and into Thursday night and into early Friday morning as well, especially around the scenic rim in the Gold Coast hinterland in excess of 40 millimeters on this forecast here, which means from the right thunderstorm up to about double that kind of rainfall accumulation is possible. Again, the uh, normal forecast models do an awful job at predicting what rainfall is expected from thunderstorms. It's kind of just a guidance here. In terms of the heavy stuff, though, certainly some heavy falls possible on Thursday afternoon into the hinterland region along the border as well inland from, uh, I guess, Natural Bridge, that sort of area outside of Bow Desert. There's some good falls also expected out towards Stanthorpe as well, as we said earlier. And falls extending right up towards about Mount Perry on the northern reaches of the Sunshine Coast as well, some decent rainfall there. It's going to stop as it gets out towards Chinchilla from a line of around Chinchilla right down towards the Gundawindi or Inverell into the northern parts of New South Wales. And then the thunderstorms tailing off around Barbary and then down towards Dubbo as well. A couple of thunderstorms possible on Thursday night. Now the severe storms, like I said, are going to be concentrated around the New South Wales Queensland border. And those heavy falls do look possible outside of the Gold Coast both Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon before they clear out by Friday. I can't wait to see what the convective forecast models suggest for both uh, Wednesday and Thursday night. 
I mean, Wednesday night, it's a little bit of a hard sell on this convective forecast model here into the northeast of New South Wales. I mean, this is why we don't trust convective forecast models beyond about today's forecast here. And I know a lot of this doesn't really make sense to the average viewer, but a convective forecast model basically takes a look at the forecast in much greater detail. And it's got a big bias towards thunderstorms. So it can do a really good job on a thunderstorm forecast if the conditions are right for the uh, for thunderstorms and um, the forecast is predictable per se. But they can also do a very good crap job. I mean, there will be plenty of thunderstorms this afternoon and evening into the interior parts of New South Wales and Queensland, but they're not going to fire up in such dramatic fashion like this forecast is suggesting here. And that's why we do use convective forecast models, but we use them very, very cautiously. Uh, the, generally speaking, they don't. you don't use them past midnight on the day of the forecast, just considering the fact that they can be very unreliable beyond about 12 hours out. Interesting stuff indeed. If I've left you, if, you've le if I have left your head spinning or scrambled from that little description on convective forecast models and drop a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to explain what I've confused you about. Into the southeast of Queensland though that's about all that there is over the coming couple of days. A couple of good thunderstorms possible into the uh, later half of December. Certainly around this time of the year we'd be expecting some good thunderstorms but again that's talk for another forecast update. Um, we do have a bit of an outbreak that I would like to talk about beginning Thursday night across parts of South Australia and Victoria as well, getting out of Queensland for the first time this video so far. You can see some thunderstorms expected Friday night across South Australia and some good storms expected into the western half of Victoria as well. It's going to be a stinker on Friday, going up to 40 degrees in Mildura, Melbourne, expecting a warm top of 34 as well on Friday. So it's going to be very warm indeed. And as such, plenty of thunderstorms expected to fire up into the north, uh, into the northwestern half of Victoria and then into the western half of New South Wales as well. Thunderstorms Storms expected along the line of that cool change as well that's going to sweep up through Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon. Plenty of severe thunderstorms expected into the southeastern corner of New South Wales, especially around West Wyalong and Wagga Wagga down towards Albury. Some very heavy falls expected down here. These thunderstorms tending to rainfall at times. Gusty winds are going to promote are those fire danger ratings as well. So again, we will keep a very close eye on things. It just looks like all around a very stormy day on Saturday across the western parts of New South Wales. Broken Hill, I mean, pretty much every community into the western half of New South Wales expecting some thunderstorm activity or some uh, thunder shower at least throughout the course of Saturday. And then along the border between New South Wales and Victoria, plenty of thunderstorms as well to talk about. And then, like I said, extending between Albury and up towards Parks, plenty of thunderstorms, a lot of which could be severe as well Saturday afternoon and evening. And they are very, very wild widespread indeed extending right throughout New South Wales. In fact, basically 80% of New South Wales bar the northeastern corner are expecting thunderstorms of some sort on Saturday, uh, especially into the Saturday afternoon hours. And it looks like we might get a little bit of a rain tail uh, funneling into the southeastern corner of New South Wales as well through Saturday and Sunday, which could bring some significant rainfall accumulations around Malakuta and Bega. So we will keep a close eye on that. Certainly something worth talking about in a future forecast update. And again, into the northeast of New South Wales as well as those thunderstorms peter out. That will be talk for tomorrow's forecast update as well. Plenty of interesting stuff happening across the southern half of the nation as well. We can't be forgetting about them. Before we turn this video fully tropical, let's just take a look at the southwestern corner of Western Australia. There is some interesting stuff over the next couple of days. I mean, we do have a little bit of rainfall streaming into the southwest throughout the course of today and into tomorrow. A couple of millimetres expected tomorrow around lunchtime for Perth. It will quickly warm up though from about Thursday onwards. You can see temperatures here for Perth rising up into the high 20s on Friday and then into the early 30s for Saturday. Could be a great beach weekend. That's for sure. 33 or 35 actually on Sunday, going to be quite warm indeed. Monday as well, expecting a top of around 35 as well. And then Tuesday, things really do continue to warm up. 38 in Perth for Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I was advised in yesterday's forecast update, take a look at this. It is going to be a scorcher. I mean, I don't believe this for a second here. Perth, 44 degrees Celsius here. So again, I will take that with a very heavy pinch of salt. And under this West Coast trough, temperatures expected to go into the high 40s into the northern parts of the wind belt, 47 for Morawa. Again, I, I'm taking this forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt. In no world is this going to happen. The temperatures are not going to be 47 in the northern parts of the weed pot. I just don't believe that for a second in December. That would break all sorts of records. But I do not doubt that Perth is going to receive its first 40 degree day into next week. In fact, it is highly likely at this time. If I was to put a number on uh, the temperature for Wednesday, I'm going to say 40 degrees right now. This West Coast trough looks primed to really bring out the hot weather. Uh, further up into the northern parts of the wheat belt, 42, 43, even 44 is possible, but I reckon 47 is just a little bit bullish at this time. The West Coast trough will also promote thunderstorm development further out into 
to the wind. Well, it looks like Perth will miss out on it, hence the 44 degree top on the forecast. Looks like things are just going to warm up until the sun finally sets, and then those temperatures moving further out to the wind. Well, by Thursday, the 12th of December, as this west coast trough weakens and moves further inland. Again, those temperatures will be quick to rise again across the southwest. You can see even by early next week, the temperatures, or the week after that, temperatures are already returning into the high 30s of parts of the wind. Well, things will get very hot very quickly across Western Australia for this time of the year. We're already starting to see a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a, of a flavoring of the uh, summer weather that is uh, just around our corner. We've had some warm days, but those temperatures are about to skyrocket across the southwest. Interesting stuff across the southwest. Again, take that forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt, and we'll revisit that in a couple of days when we know exactly what's going to be happening and what temperatures are actually a little bit more realistic on the forecast. Let's turn this video tropical now. I'm very, very excited to. The reason why it is so warm is, of course, because we do have that tropical cyclone offshore from Western Australia. But let's pull it back to Friday and take a look at this system as it develops. So you can see here plenty of rainfall expected across the northern parts of the Kimberley region, but the forecast has been flipped on its head once again. You can see the tropical low developing further offshore. We've also got a second tropical low developing outside of West Island. But again, this is going to be in uh, a different base, and the Bureau of Meteorology won't be concerned about this system because it is further towards the west of the la uh, longitude line of 90 degrees east, and that's where the Bureau of Meteorology's cutoff is for monitoring systems. That will be monitored by uh, Madagascar and Mauritius. Now this system over here, this certainly will be monitored by the Bureau of Meteorology, developing slowly offshore from Western Australia throughout Sunday and Monday, earning tropical cyclone status by the looks of things on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then rapidly moving further offshore and weakening throughout Wednesday, Thursday, and then into Friday. Looks like cyclone impacts are possible on West Island if this forecast does uh, come into fruition here. So we will take a very close look at this system as it does develop over the coming couple of days. Certainly some interesting stuff here. The Bureau of Meteorology currently giving this a 15% chance of tropical cyclone development and that's a really good number to give this system in terms of a chance of development. I mean the tropical low hasn't formed yet so obviously the Bureau of Meteorology is very confident with this system actually becoming a tropical cyclone at some point in its life. They wouldn't be giving it that kind of number when the system hasn't even formed yet and it's just kind of a bit of a, a, a thing on the forecast model. So again the Bureau of Meteorology is actually quite confident in this system, more confident than that 15% would suggest. Uh, again this system here does have a good life ahead of it. The sea temperatures offshore from Western Australia are up towards 31, 32 degrees Celsius in places. It's bath water up there, and this is jet fuel stuff for tropical cyclones. It gets a little bit cooler as you get further offshore, still though 28, 29, that's enough fuel to sustain a powerful tropical cyclone. It just looks like those upper level winds are gonna to get to this system before it actually intensifies properly, and you can see it here on the forecast by next Wednesday. The mid-level wind shear, I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but it isn't looking to flash about 20 to 30 knots. So the system will have a hard life battling some wind shear, but if that does drop, then we will have a power Powerful tropical cyclone on our hands. Of course, no threat to Western Australia at this time, apart from the rainfall threat to the Kimberley region. Some flooding pro uh, also possible across the northern parts of the Kimberley region, as this rainfall really does pick up later on this weekend and into early next week. Broome could receive some good rainfall totals, depending on how close this system tracks to land. Still a lot of details that need to be ironed out in this forecast here, and I reckon by Friday or Saturday, I'll be able to give you a very accurate forecast on what uh, this system is are going to be doing and what rainfall and impacts are expected for Western Australia. Again, this is just more of a bit of a heads up at this time. And then much later on into the forecast period, we do have a little spin up that looks possible into the Coral Sea. And we did talk about this in yesterday's forecast update. Not only do we get another tropical low offshore from Western Australia, but we're going to neglect this for today's video just because it is still very uncertain. But offshore from uh, the Solomon Islands and PNG, we do have a little bit of a low spinning up here. Now, of course, this is, doesn't look like a tropical cyclone or a tropical cyclone threat imminent, but we have seen over the last couple of days uh, some kind of spin-up happening around PNG and the Solomon Islands. The GFS actually calling for it to spin up right on top of Thursday Island here across PNG and then heading into the Coral Sea later on into the forecast period. So again, the GFS forecast model calling for it to be much closer to Queensland. The Eastern GFS forecast model, however, calling for this to be much further into the Coral Sea. And it looks like it has a similar start to life as Cyclone Jasper did last year. Again, we're going to have to take a look at this in a later forecast update, but just a heads up again, a Coral Sea tropical low does look possible. Uh, for closer towards Christmas. Again, no threat to the Queensland area this time, and I want nobody in the tropics that has now watched this uh, tropical cyclone briefing, this tropical cyclone update, to start panicking and thinking that they're going to receive a tropical cyclone. No Australian town or city is expecting tropical cyclone impacts in the next 14 days. Again, we will keep a very close eye on the forecast. Things can change very quickly at this time of the year, but at this time, there is absolutely nothing to be panicking about. This is just a heads up and something to get a little bit excited for, I guess, if that is your cup of tea. 
Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. It's been a long forecast update, and I do appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Thank you so much for all the support lately as well. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. Again, their support is much appreciated. Thank you so much for subscribing as well. If you haven't already, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. And if I've left you it, 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 somewhat confused by this video, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. But that is all for me today, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.